The man whose ideas and message and now his delegates are on equal footing to combat the establishment of the Republican Party. Here now, Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman Paul, it's a pleasure. Congratulations uh, on the numbers you achieved last night in Iowa. Thank you, Judge. Good to be with you. What is your road to the Republican nomination as you see it? I think you've uh, hinted as to what it is. I mean, it's getting it's getting the delegates and uh, you have to, you know, win the primaries or win these caucuses. But there are some that uh, are going to be more difficult than others. You know, some states are very, very big. And uh, then there you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, which we won't have, although we have a very strong donor base, uh, but they are small donors. So we have to depend on that. So it is going to the smaller states and uh, looking at the caucus state and then do our very best in all the states possible. But uh, I, I think we got the boost that we needed and uh, we're feeling good about where we're going from there. What, what can you do to remind Republican voters that you are the only game changer, that all the other Republican candidates agree on, in, in one form or another, basically on the status quo as it is, or as it was when George W. Bush was president. Well, you know what would be encouraging if, uh, you know, our large rallies, we had large rallies out uh, in Iowa, sometimes over a thousand, sometimes 13, 1400 people. And responses, a lot of responses came on the foreign policy, of bringing our troops home, the civil liberties, uh, the Patriot Act, they, they inevitably, whether I was in a Republican group or independence or what, uh, they, they know about the Patriot Act. And they also know about this uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which really impressed me because so many would even bring it up and ask questions about it. And the responses there are fantastic. But you don't hear that on the news. You know, they don't report that. And if they would know that, they would see that there's a bit of a difference because the rest are supportive of the status quo. They're not talking about civil liberties. They're talking about, you know, an aggressive uh, uh, foreign policy of moving troops around the war and occupation and changing the internal governments of other nations. Uh, and, and, you know, even when they talk about fiscal conservatism, they're not really talking about it. Right. They're talking about tinkering on the edges and cutting a little bit of the increases. I, of course, you know I have a proposal to really cut the budget. Your, your, yours is the only proposal that will cut the budget. In fact, you want to cut a trillion dollars in the first year. If, if we cut the trillion dollars right. in the first year of your presidency, you could probably run the federal government without having to borrow any more money. If that were so, what would that mean for the economy? Well, I think, you know, there's a lot of psychology in economics and, uh, you know, you need to restore confidence. You have to get better policy. You restore, you know, the psychology and the confidence that would help. I think just changing foreign policy, it would change the psychology. If all of a sudden they started seeing our troops here at home rather than going into Australia and these different places. Now they're adding countries into all over uh, Africa and uh, looking at Syria and Iran, you know, if that psychology would be changed and that we'd be spending either that money at home or letting right. the people spend that money, I think I would give a, a, a real boost. But we need to get the people to spend the money. We need to quit monetizing debt. We need to market to operate. We need contracts back again. Right. Uh, we need, uh, you know, market interest rates, all the things that we used to have, but we gave up on about 100 years ago. Last week, uh, I was off in almost every place I went out in northwest New Jersey, a very conservative Republican area where I live. People came up to me and said, I like Ron Paul, I like Ron Paul, but I'm worried about his foreign policy. If you had been standing next to me when those folks said that to me, what would you have said back to them? Well, I might have, I might have started with a question and asking, what, what are you worried about? And what they usually talk about is uh, they're afraid I'm not strong on national defense. And I tell them that just spending money overseas is military spending. It may, may well distract from national defense. And I would use Republicans like, uh, like Eisenhower warning about the military industrial complex and Robert Taft, how he warned about getting into NATO and that we should be spending this uh, money at home. But the one, uh, the one thing that they pay more attention to is they think that if you don't vote for the money and for the wars and everything, you're against the troops. But when you give them the statistic that I get twice as much money as the other candidates from active military duties, uh, I said, well, why doesn't telling. that count for something? And they pay a lot of attention to that. Congressman Paul, congratulations on the victory last night. We'll see you in New Hampshire. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. As for the other candidates,